Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Q3 FI22 Earnings Conference Call of KEI Industries Limited, hosted by Monarch Network Capital Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note. That this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Abhor Rawat from Munak and Worth Capital Limited. Thank you, and over to you, Mr. Rawat. Thank you, Nidav. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone is safe and healthy. We are pleased to host the senior management team of KEI Industries today, and we have with us Mr. Anil Gupta, Chairman and Managing Director of the company, and Mr. Rajiv Gupta, CFO of the company. Let us start this call with management's initial comments about the results, and then we can take your questions. Over to you, Anil sir. <coughs> Thank you. You. Yeah. Good afternoon, everybody, um, and welcome to this in a conference call. Uh, I'll give a brief about the Q3 results of uh, KEI Industries. Uh, the, uh, although you have all these numbers with you now. Uh, I'll give a brief. Net sales of the company in Q3 uh, is rupees 1,563.85 crore, uh, and uh, we have grown uh, in net sales by 35.64 percent in this quarter, year-on-year -year basis. The company has achieved highest ever quarterly sales in this quarter. EBITDA in this quarter is rupees 158.54 crore, uh, and the growth in EBITDA compared to uh, previous quarter year on year is 22.93 percent. EBITDA oblique net sales margin is 10.14 percent, as against 11.19 percent in the same period uh, previous year. EBITDA margin declined mainly because of some expenses normalized back to pre-COVID level and sharp fluctuations in the input costs. Profit after tax this, this quarter is rupees. 101.25 crore against rupees 76.15 crore uh, in the uh, uh, same quarter previous year. Growth in the profit after tax is 32.996 percent. The com this company has achieved highest ever quarterly PAT during this quarter. PAT oblique net sales margin is 6.47 percent versus 6.6 percent last year same period. Uh, the company's domestic institutional wire and cable sale uh, in this quarter is rupees 480 crore, uh, uh, and against rupees 343 crore in the same quarter last year. The growth is approximately 40 percent, and uh, the growth in the growth in the institutional EHV cable sale is 183 crore. Domestic institutional EHV cable sale is 183 crore. Uh, and the growth in this segment is 18 percent. Export sale this quarter is rupees 186 crore. Uh, the growth in uh, in this is around 34 percent. Out of this export sales, cables 139 crore, EPC 15 crore, and stainless steel wire 32 crore. Total cable institutional sale contributed approximately 50%, 51% in third quarter against last year, same period, 52%. And sales through dealer network, dealer and distri distribution network, uh, achieved is 634 crore in third quarter against 410 crore last year. So growth in this segment, sales through dealer network is 55%. So from the beginning of year 2021, company has been working on strengthening its dealer and distribution network and is it and has recruited more than 150 um, manpower upfront in the marketing department from electrical uh, and other uh, fmpg cg eg background at different levels span india resulting into good growth in the uh, b2c segment business the total active working dealer of the company as on 31st december 2021 was approximately 1700 and uh, uh, totally contributed uh, through dealer network is 41% of the total sale of the company in third quarter against last year, 
same period it was 36 percent the epc sale other than cable is rupees 93 crore uh, against previous year 122 crore decline is approximately 24 percent in the third quarter uh, out of the total sales of epc the sale of uh, turnkey contribution from extra high voltage cable projects is rupees 38 crore as against 30 crore last year same period the stainless steel wire sale in q3 of uh, fy22 is rupees 65 crore against same quarter in the previous year is 41 crore the growth is approximately 59 percent now i will give a, uh, a brief of nine months summary uh, in, during nine months, the company achieved a sales of 3,935 crore, uh, resulting into a growth of 34% in the nine months period. And EBITDA achieved in nine months is 424 crore, and the growth is 26.3%. Net sales margin, EBITDA oblique net sales margin is 10.77%, as against 11.43% in the same period previous year. Profit after tax in nine months is rupees 260 crore, um, and the growth in PAT is 42%. So the PAT oblique net sales margin has improved to 6.62% versus 6.25% last year, same period, in the nine months period. So the domestic institutional wire and cable sale has grown by 52%. Um, and uh, export sale, however, in the nine months period uh, has declined by 15%. However, the total institutional cable sale um, in nine months has contributed 50% against nine months, against last year, 55%. And sales through dealer network uh, is grown by 70% in nine months period as compared to last year in the of nine, last year nine months and uh, as i mentioned that uh, the sales through dealer network has contributed 41 percent in nine months against last year of 32 percent the epc sale uh, has declined in nine months period uh, by 19 percent this is in line with our previous guidance to lower epc business and and restrict it to approximately 10 percent of the total uh, of the total revenue stainless steel wire sale in nine months has grown by 74 percent now the pending orders as on today is uh, as on 31st december is 2994 crore uh, in this to, uh, the epc or pending orders are 1038 crore EHV cable and EPC uh, extra high voltage cables uh, turnkey projects 419 crore uh, cable domestic business is 1429 crore and export cable export orders pending are 108 crore besides that whatever sales we th we do through the dealer network uh, in there in that there is no pendency of orders because they are generally orders uh, are placed and then supplied through from the stock, so uh, air ready stock. So uh, no order book is uh, there for the B2C sale uh, of our wires and cables. The company's credit rating from ICRA Care and India Ratings is double A minus for long term bank facilities and. A1 plus for short term bank facilities. The book value per equity share of the company is rupees 226.48 as on 31st December 2021 as against 197.38 as on March 31st 2021. Uh, borrowing and operating cash flows and finance cost. Net debt including LC acceptances is rupees 487 crore as on 31st December 2021 as against 407 crore as on 31st March 2021. 
However, it was 922 crore as, as on 31st March 2020. So a substantial decline of uh, around 450 crore uh, from uh, previous financial year. Uh, from, from the financial FY20. The, during the nine months of FY21-22, finance cost has decreased to rupees 30.34 crore as against rupees 44.78 crore in the previous year same period. Percentage of financial charges on the net sales has decreased in this period to 0.77% from 1.53%. The company has used operating cash flows for cash purchases resulting into reduction of trade payables, uh, that means creditors, uh, through LC, uh, letter of credits, acceptances, substantially by rupees 243 crore as compared to March 21, which has further reduced finance cost during the nine months. Though it may impact certain financial ratios like working capital cycle or return on capital employed, but it has benefited the company in the form of reduction of finance, reduction in the finance cost. Uh, Future outlook of the company, uh, our strategy is to increase continuously the retail sale and downsizing EPC business, which is working well. And in future, within two years time, our retail sale will reach around 50% of the total sales of the company with annual growth in the retail by 30 to 35% per annum. Uh, in retail business, which is evident from nine months uh, uh, period of FY22 results. Uh, we think that retail business offers superior growth prospects with better margins and lower working capital requirements. Capac capacity utilized during nine months of FY22 uh, is 71% in the cable division, 66% uh, in the house wire division, and around 100% in stainless steel wire division. So uh, the company has already has capacity to uh, achieve growth in the next financial year, which is already in place. Company is in the process to expand the capacity for setting up a greenfield project for LT, HT, and EHV cables with an investment of 7 to 800 crore will be incurred in three to four years time to maintain a CAGR of 17 to 18% for coming years. Our last 15 years CAGR, CAGR is 15%, and last five years CAGR is 20%, except 2021 financial year. Overall, the company is targeting uh, more than 30% growth overall in FY22 uh, with strong order book in hand and good demand from the government and private capex and as well as the real estate. The, I'll mention about little bit of demand drivers uh, there is a continuous demand from uh, government infra projects as well as private capex, uh, especially uh, from solar power projects, metro rail projects, oil and gas sectors, and steel, cement, and refining sector industry, underground, underground cabling projects of transmission and distribution in metro cities, um, highway projects including tunnel and ventilation projects, smart city projects, steel industry expansion. Uh, we expect that we will even grow in the export with exports as we have seen in the Q3, our export has grown by approximately 35% um, compared to last year. So this is uh, from the management side. Um, I thank you very much for your, for your valuable time in this conference call. Thank you. And you may ask any questions. If you may have, we'll uh, gladly answer it. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Rahul Agrawal. 
from Incred Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good afternoon, and uh, thank you for the nice presentation, Anil And good afternoon, Rajiv ji. Sir, qu quick questions. Firstly, to start with, I understand copper was volatile, and hence margins were soft for the quarter. Uh, could you help us understand how does fourth quarter look like? How's the start to January and uh, and and some price hikes are pending here uh, to be taken in fourth quarter. Could you help understand some color on this, please? That's the first question. Uh, the price hikes are continuously passed on from uh, whenever whenever the raw, raw, raw material prices are increasing, the they are taken into consideration whenever new offers are made. And so far as the retail is concerned. Uh, prices are, uh, you know, practically uh, priced on readjusted every 15 days. So uh, the the little bit of effect of 1% margin was there because of some, uh, you know, uh, some pending orders uh, of uh, extra high voltage and uh, some other orders which which were on the firm prices and all these orders has been executed and cleared. We we do not have any. Pending orders for at at old prices in 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 cat any category. So whatever uh, uh, orders are now there in the system, they are all booked from uh, you know uh, 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 the copper and aluminium level which are presently prevailing. So we don't do not see any margin erosion in the in the coming time. In the last three months, I think prices are also stable for copper and aluminium. So margins go back to 11% fourth quarter. Is that understanding correct? Yeah, uh, I can't say exactly, but uh, uh, we hope that it will be it will be maintained because uh, there is no uh, pressure of, of raw material prices now. Got it, sir. So the second question was, you know, we're looking at achieving very good scale on the housing wire side. We're almost running at 1600 crores yearly run rate now. Uh, how has the pricing behavior been in the market for KEI for you know housing wires versus Havels, Polycap, Pinolex? Uh, are we now the discounts versus these brands have have reduced? Uh, are we at par? Any color, please? Yes, sir. No, no. We are still maintaining the same price levels, and we are. Um, I mean, definitely there is a price gap of three to five percent from Havels and Pinolex, but uh, here. Improving our uh, gap, uh, improving our margin, and reducing this gap year after year from the uh, stronger brands. Got it, sir. So, thirdly, on the order book, uh, so obviously, as you said, dealer sales doesn't have an order book, and that is about 40% of top line. So, if I remove that sale from annual sales, we're talking about 3,000 crores of uh, sales coming from non-dealer. And that is equivalent to the, you know, the average order book has been remaining in that range of 2,500 to 3,000 crores. Uh, I just wanted to get your help on to understand this number uh, that, you know, is that decent enough to run a 12 month order book or you would, you know, you would have, uh, uh, is this number going to go up or down going forward? Because my understanding is housing wire sale growth is much higher than the non-dealer company. Mm -hmm. So obviously uh, this number, you know, will stay here. So could you help me understand this? Yeah, I think uh, you are right that uh, uh, order book, book to order uh, numbers should remain similar because in this around 1400 crore orders or 1500 crore orders are only of the EPC. So these orders will be executed over a period of two years. So um, uh, rest the cable orders uh, which are in, in the vicinity of 1550 crore, uh, uh, they will be ex uh, and EHP cables. So they will be executed, uh, uh, they are executable within next four to six months maximum. M maximum 90% orders are executed within three months, but 10 to 15% goes up to six months also. So uh, the numbers of the pending order will remain same because 40 to 40, 42% coming from retail. Got it, sir. And lastly, any expectations from the budget, as in anything specific on cables and wires in terms of duties, etc., or is it largely going to be again supporting and boosting government and private sector capex? That's my last question. Thank you. We are not expecting anything from the government. I think they, by lowering the income tax, they have already done enough. There, what we expect is the demand, which will come through the government spending infra push and. Uh, other policies like PF, productivity linked incentive, etc., which will create, bring industries and create demand for vast and 
Perfect, sir. Thank you so much. All the best for the coming quarter. Thank you for answering. I'll come back in the queue. Thank you. Participants, you have a star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Lavina Kodros from Jeffrey's India. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Congrats on a good set of results. I just want to understand there was some uh, delay in offtake. Uh, I mean, your working capital on the inventory side uh, has been impacted a little bit. So, you could just explain if there was any delayed offtake on deliveries and reasons for it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, Lavina, first of all, if you go by held, if you go by holding period of the data and inventory, it has it has reduced further 0.25 months if we include data and inventory as compared to the last year. But the working capital hit, uh, you, you are seeing because of the current liability, the payable which uh, Anil Ji has told. So it, the payable has reduced substantially by more than 243 crore. So it comes out to almost one month. So because of that, it is it is looking like that working capital is increased, but it is not the case because whatever cash flow we were having, we were utilizing to reduce the interest bearing creditors. So and that we did around uh, 14 crore of interest cost in terms of absolute number we have saved for that actually. Uh, little bit inventory can be reduced further of the finished goods, which which definitely will be adjusted in this quarter by increasing the sale. Okay, so just a bit on the environmental issues. What was exactly that impacted? Really close to uh, around 100 crore of finished goods was stuck because of these environmental issues in the month of December. No, because uh, because uh, the uh, uh, we had uh, a, a big stock of manufactured for Delhi Transco and some 50 to 55 crore worth of cables could not be dispatched because uh, there was a ban on entry of diesel vehicles because of the pollution level in Delhi and in, 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 in also in the uh, MCR region. So a lot of uh, dispatches could not be done for uh, large institutional orders because of the, because they needed large trailers to transport and they were banned. Okay, so that should be in the month of January. That, 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 that has already been liquidated in January, uh, already been dispatched. And, uh, sir, lastly, the interest cost break up please for the quarter. You can you, you can write down. The interest on term loan for this quarter is 0.67, and the working capital interest is close to 4.6 crore. Then LC interest cost it has reduced. Oh sorry sorry. Um, uh, please please note again the term loan interest is 0.48. The working capital interest is close to 4.6 crore. Then LC interest is very minimal, oh, just 0 0.03 crore. Bank charges on, on LC is also 0 0.09. Bank charges on bank guarantee is 2.43 crore. And, and the other bank charges like processing fee, etc., it is 1.27 crore. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ahmed Mawar from Edelweiss Financial Service. Please go ahead. Um, thank you. Uh, Anilji Rajiji, congratulations on uh, great uh, retail-driven growth. So I just have uh, one question. Uh, so typically, if you see the way we are going, um, you know, we will be crossing retail revenues, uh, especially on house wires, uh, you know, around 2,000 crore by maybe 24. Uh, that should translate a significant, uh, you know, cash flow in our business. And if I take uh, on a three-year scale, uh, you know, Am I right in my understanding that generally we should be able to, you know, clock more than 250 to 300 crore plus worth of uh, operating cash flow average in the next three years? Uh, that's my first question, sir. So you are right, in the, Amit. Uh, because of increasing the uh, of retail channel sale, our cash flow is improving every year on it. And because of that, we are able to utilize our cash for the cash purchases, which had uh, reduced the already the interest cost, and from here onward for next three years, our capital expenditure is in pipeline, approximately every year 200 crore uh, to 250 crore in the new capex area for low tension, high tension, and extra high voltage power cable. So that will be met through this uh, cash flow only. So because of this heavy uh, operating good cash flow, 
so we are able to generate this kind of uh, through the uh, retail as well as we are going to expand into the capex without taking any further loan etc yeah that thanks, is only it is only possible because of this business model sure sure sir uh, maybe one more question uh, if anil ji can help so typically beyond our uh, you know cable expansion which i'm sure you know should happen in the next two years uh generally beyond 1 to 2 year uh, how will you think of the you know retail franchise you know uh, maybe around once you attain a critical mass in buyers you will think of smeg but am i right in my understanding that maybe beyond 23 maybe beyond 24 is where we will have a bigger smeg plan before that it's anyways not feasible am i right sir actually smeg plan are there but still we are uh... more focusing on the grabbing the market share for the existing product of housewire so that's why we are little bit conservative for adding new product but still that is on the radar and in the planning stage also that's why the 150 people who so ever inducted into the retail team of housewire they have been taken from the various background of the electrical fmg products so in future within a year time definitely it will be done but in the meantime we are able to grow our housewife business uh make sure thank you thank you very so much sir maybe one also, last in this year also we in nine months we have grown close to 70% of our dealer distributor business yeah yeah and if i exclude the pricing impact it is still more than uh, 30 35% value growth sir yes yes Vol- volume growth sorry volume growth is close to that okay okay sir maybe one last question from my side of of the current sales force that we have for branded wires what percentage is there in northeast uh, and uh, you know in south uh, in general yeah we have given the percentage also in the, if the break up of the revenue uh, then the 37% comes from the north second followed by west that is the 31% Yeah, no, sir. I saw that. I saw that. So now I saw that my question is different. Basically, in the current, uh, you know, sales team, you know, uh, north, east, and south would account for what percentage of the you know manpower deployed for marketing and uh, data distribution. So now we are energy is deploying more and more manpower in the south and eastern side. Already have a good amount of manpower in the northeast and eastern India, and and uh, mm-hmm. now we are in, in increasing our strength in the south. South, uh, we still have lesser people. but eastern india we have already strengthened uh, in in last 9 months and that will show results in the in the coming quarters um, uh, and uh, south we are now this quarter is our focus will be strengthening our marketing team got it got it thank you thank you anuji uh, rajesh ji thank you good luck yeah thank you anuji thank you participants you may press star and one to ask a question the next question is from the line of naman parik from nsl securities please go ahead uh, am i audible yes yes naman uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, good afternoon one and all uh, my question is regarding the capex plan for the company like uh, how much capex has been done for the quarter we are in the process of acquiring the land and uh, within one month time we will do the registry so the advances are are given so now the registry will start from the the first of uh, february and then within one month the registration will be done so the land will be acquired then we will be start uh, doing the capex in terms of the building and advances for plant machinery etc so it will take another 15 to 18 months time to set up fully this project in phase 1 okay thank you so much uh, like uh, can you let me know the amount of the capex that might be done in the like Yeah, 15 to 18 months period of time 15 to 18 months as i said in every year our target to spend around 200 crore to 250 crores in a year so in the current year it will go to close to 60 70 crore and then next year it will be 200 20 50 250 crore then again next year more than 200 crore okay, okay. thank you so much sir thank you The next question is from the line of Harshad Kaparia from Milara Capital PLC. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations for a good set of numbers, uh, Anil sir and uh, <coughs> sorry. Uh, so just wanted to check with you, uh, sir. In terms of margin, we have seen a quiet deterioration uh, on a YOI basis, well, on a few on few basis. Uh, can you share, you know, in terms of product segment wise, what are the margins? 
uh, that you have clocked that would help us to understand uh, how fast can we able to recoup uh, the margins in the coming of quarter see in the institutional sale as an lg explained uh, especially for extra high voltage power cable where the orders are, order are pending for 6 to 7 months so that got hit because this time the fluctuation was the sudden rise time actually at one side actually when the copper adjusted goes up and goes down but this time it is going up and up again so because of that it got hit 1 1.5% but we were able to recover our margin by reducing the uh, expenses versus sale to reduce the percentage so because of that we were hit only by 1% in this quarter and now since last three months the uh, all the copper and uh, the all the metal price are stable so in future it will be normalized now so can you say what kind of a price hike you have taken in q3 uh, for the uh, various segments in terms of retail yes see in in terms of retail um, i think price hikes are uh, around 5 to 7% because Q, there was no not much hikes in the q3 hikes as uh, especially in copper copper was peak copper had peaked in i think may or june so far as uh, institutional business is concerned it is every time we we make an offer we are always considering the uh, you know existing price levels of raw materials so the the price hikes are passed on continuously on a continuous basis okay uh, and this final question on the expanding your wire segment into different electrical business uh, so can we expect any launch in the next financial year in terms of product categories and then you can scale up your business if you can share some insights on that would be helpful uh, we are not expecting uh, any uh, any launch of any other product in the next next year uh but we will be uh, we are presently we are focusing on our wire business in the retail segment but definitely uh, it is an, in our radar to add some other category products in the electrical goods which uh, we will let you know uh, whenever uh, we uh, feel this uh, these products you see we are not in a position to earn the money from cable and burn the money into the new products so because little bit that is still in the books so first our focus is to run the company without any debt and uh, uh, almost on the 75% to 80% we have covered the uh, 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 space to reduce the debt balance 25% jo mehnat abhi hum logon ka bacha hua hai that we are doing still doing and we are hopeful within two more, within one one and a half year time we will reduce this debt also whatever little bit that is had so because of that we are going very conservative so so and at present we are more focusing on the buyer so we are at present suppose in houseware segment we want to grab the market share of close to 10% so that is our focus we want to increase the sales to retail whether it is from new products or from existing products so existing product sale increase is better because it is giving us the good profit and good uh, cash flow thank you rajesh sir for those uh, you know extremely insightful answers thank you anil ji and wishing you all the best thank you sir thank you thank you the next question is from the line of shrinidhi from hsbc bank please go ahead yeah hi and thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on good set of numbers uh, sir couple of question from my end firstly on sir a guidance uh, we see a, quite a strong guidance over medium term and if i see next year a lot of this growth that you're guiding has to come from volume growth so just wondering uh, where are we drawing confidence in terms of this growth as an lg in various sectors where and he is seeing the growth and orders are coming and very good order pipeline we are having around 1500 crore worth of from domestic institution and 100 crore worth of order from the export market for the cable segment so that is visible for us these kind of demand and the capital expenditure the government is focusing whether it is in the power sector or in the infra sector so everywhere this capital goods is required where the cable will be sold actually 
So actually, in the past experience of the last 15 years, wherein the uh, the economy was strong or economy was weak, still we were contributing close to 15 percent uh, yes. uh, CAGR. हम लोगों का था और अभी अगर five years का देखें तो आप देखें तो it is close to 20 percent. So 17, 18 percent growth is uh, was never a challenge to KI because of the uh, uh, setup we are having. We are having export. We are having domestic institution, we are having the extra high voltage, we are having retail. So because of this, in, in uh, institutional size, we are serving in a year close to 1500 customers, 1700 dealer distributor, then 50 countries to export. So very wide uh, diversified uh, customer base we are having. So because of that, we are always confident to grow at least 17-18%. Fair enough, sir. Thank you for elaborate answers. And sir, uh, on this uh, dealer and distribution network, uh, would it be possible to throw some color on uh, what this number could be from current level of 700 that you have? And sir, second is some of some of your peers' major uh, retailer reach. Okay, a number close to lakhs for some 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 companies it is 150,000. See, do we do we measure that number? Yeah, yeah. So you see, this year our CMD sir has focused and given direction to all the marketing people to maintain the dealer distributor number, to exchange with the strong dealer numbers, and to replace the uh, weak candidates. So the whole uh, uh, system was overhauled, and the new dealer distributor were engaged by replacing the existing one. But his his vision was to first increase the sale of the existing dealer distributor so that their ROI can be increased. No, no. I think your question was regarding uh, mapping the, whether we are mapping the retailers. Yes, we are uh, mapping the retailers which are working under a distributor and uh, uh, most, many of the, our distributors are having uh, 25 to 50 retailers uh, to whom that distributor is catering, uh, the, the, the retail shops. So, uh, uh, and the number of retailers has increased. Our retailer, our re retailers should be around uh, 20 to 25,000 at the moment, but exact numbers are not having at the moment. Fair enough, sir. Uh, and sir, a uh, couple of more questions, if I may. Uh, uh, yeah, please. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, so on the retention money, sir, uh, would it be possible to throw some light on how it has progressed? Uh, is it as per your expectations? Yeah, it is our expectation. As we guided earlier, that 150 crore will be recovered from EPC division. We have already recovered 100 crore rupees. So outstanding of EPC has gone down by 100 crore rupees already. And within this quarter, the balance 50 crore will also be receiving. And I mean, we can just say that uh, next from FY23, the company should will be able to generate strong cash flows for the, the you know in the company. Uh, you, you, see, this uh, we have already in this board meeting we have already declared an interim dividend uh, of uh, uh, 2.5 rupees per per share, which is corresponding to 125 percent of the uh, you know uh, uh, equity capital. So, um, so the, as the free gen cash generation will uh, will improve, the uh, the dividend may also improve. And last one, if I may, sir, uh, Rajesh, sir, if you uh, can you update us on uh, how much of our retail business is already under channel finance, and how much is it with how much of that channel finance distribution business is with recourse, and yeah, those two numbers. I think abhi am logon ka channel finance me without recourse kafi limit sanction hua hai, aur baaki March tak hamara kafi saara channel finance me covered ho jayega. Or within a year time, under recourse will be very, very less. Uh, only will be there without recourse by next year. Because already Yes Bank, Indusind Bank, Axis Bank, they have already sanctioned without recourse. So it will not shown in the balance sheet to that extent. So when it will be replaced in next three months, so the new channel finance will be without recourse. But sir, how much? Yeah, that's helpful, sir. But how much is... As of now, uh, as, of, as of now, say suppose 200 uh, crore plus was the channel finance amount, but under recourse, it is under it is close to 150 crore. Sorry to interrupt, Srinidhi. I'll request you to come back from the question queue for a follow-up question. 
a request to all the participants. Please restrict to two questions per participant. If time permit, please come back in the question queue. The next question is from the line of Neera Vasa from Anandati Financial Service. Please go ahead. Hello, sir, and thank you very much for the opportunity. So my question pertains out based on the order backlog that we have. What percentage of order backlog is protected with price variation clause? So price variation is almost 10 to 15 percent orders are with price variation, which is which is from the PSU side. And sir, what kind of price hikes have been taken in first nine months, and what kind of price hikes are we planning to take in fourth quarter for the retail channel? Uh, I had already mentioned that in last in the third quarter the approximate price hikes were around five to seven and a half percent in different uh, sizes of wires and cables, depending on the raw material configuration. And uh, um, I have said that we are adjusting the retail pricing every 15 days. And so far as projects are B2B business is concerned, every time we are making an offer, uh, it is uh, done on the existing price level. Uh, and uh, execution during considering execution period, we are building either uh, an enough safety margin and or or, or else we are hold the stock or we uh, you know hedge uh, uh, or book the copper and aluminium for that. So effectively, if I can say that the gross margin preparation that we have seen in third quarter in nine months FI22 can be attributed mainly to the institutional business which were fixed price in nature and were have been executed in third quarter with high commodity prices. Yeah, you can say that. Thank you, sir. My query is answered. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Devang Patel from NAFA Asset Management. Please go ahead. Hi, so what is the volume growth we have seen for the cables and wire business in Q3 and 9 months on a YOY basis, if you can use that, please? In Q3, the volume growth was 18%, and in uh, YOY 9 months, it was close to 22%. Okay. And secondly, what is our aspiration uh, levels for the EBITDA margins once our retail share is 50% in a few years? Uh, Will we be reinvesting uh, higher margins into marketing for new products on the FME side? At least EBITDA NLG has told you that uh, the 11% EBITDA will not be a problem. And year on year basis because our prices of the wire is lesser than our peer group. So we will be improving by 0.25 to 0.5 bips Half, year on year basis. Yeah, 1% around we will be able to improve in the, in the retail side. Uh, sir, so and overall journey for next three to four years to reach or to bridge the gap of the prices. Uh, are you saying that overall EBITDA margins therefore will increase to 12% or only on the retail side you are saying it will increase by 1%? In two years time we can say. Overall. Yeah, in two years time we can reach to that level also. Okay, so that's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Agrawal from Infit Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the follow-up. Sir, I wanted to discuss a thought. Uh, being debt-free is obviously great. I mean, as you said, about one, one and a half year, you will be debt-free. But given the term loan rates for project debt today, you know, for the size of CapEx you are looking for, and your, you know, based on your credit rating, my sense is it will be lower than 7%. Is it possible to retain this cash in the balance sheet and look for distressed assets for FMEG or even cable and wire assets if available in the country? Obviously, co had some impact on MSME. And these companies sometimes are also bought for, you know, acquiring land assets. And the, oh, they have, obviously, the plants are not attractive enough and they have old machines which are redundant anyway. So any thoughts on the way we have to utilize, you know, our capital and make better use of cash? Just a thought if you would help yeah, understand this. First of all, Rahulji, it should be very, very clear from our side that we don't uh, acquire the assets rather than we believe to grow and develop in an organic way. So that's how we are doing since last 30, 40 years. And our base is we are, whether we had started EPC, whether we had started extra voltage power cable, or we will start in future FMEG, we will start from our scratch, from our own manufacturing on a very strong footing. So we are into very conservative mode for that purpose. As far as the cash, whatever will be available, we are utilizing 
we are not keeping or not investing in any mutual fund or any other activity other than the operation. We are utilizing only in the operation where we can get the direct benefits rather than the here and there. Whatever cash we were having, we still we were utilizing for the cash purchase. And in future also we will be utilizing in the operation purpose only. Because in the debt reduction is, doesn't mean we cannot borrow because we are uh, having the sanction limits and we will be having the sanction limits. So at, our, at any given point of time, any good opportunity for growth is available, that, for, that money will be available to us. Sir, I understand that, but even even after accounting for capex, uh, you know whatever range bout, we still will have more cash. And uh, obviously, even after paying all these payables, you know you you got got it down significantly now. उसके बाद भी आपके पास पैसा बचेगा सर. ईमानदारी के बाद बोले हमारा growth का जो भूख है ना वो 25 percent ही है सर. वो तो आपके साथ में हमें conservatively बोलना पड़ता है सर. तो otherwise आप देखो हम तो 25 percent से कम में खुश होते नहीं हैं. तो जैसा होगा जितना वैसा होगा उस उस हिसाब से हम ग्रोथ भी बढ़ा लेंगे सर अपना। ओके सर सो 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 इस देर देर इस नथिंग इन इंडिया व्हिच इस अवेलेबल व्हिच अट्रैक्ट्स यू इस दैट इस दैट ऑल यू नो हैव यू लाइक आपने देखा है कुछ एसेट यहाँ पे कि आपको मतलब करना ही नहीं है सब खुद no sir, I was more coming from the land angle. अभी अपने को land acquisition में भी ये covid के चक्कर में time लग गया। तो ऐसा कोई asset भी नहीं जहाँ पे land available है। Is that an attraction? तो क्या है कुछ चीजें mind में बिल्कुल clear है हम लोगों के जैसे हम लोग कोई भी तरह का currency में use नहीं करते derivative hedging mechanism only हम अपना normal hedging करते हैं जिसमें कि हमारा natural hedge cover रहता है। हमारा factories में भी देखिए आप natural hedge में रहते हैं। तो उसमें कम से कम हमें भी ये शोर्टी रहती है कि हम एक सस्टेनेबल लिबट्टा मार्जिन पे जा रहे हैं और स्लोली स्लोली अपनी इंटरेस्ट को आपको घटा रहे हैं तो हमारा पैट लेवल जो है वो साढ़े छह परसेंट आलरेडी आ चुका है और हम इस पैट लेवल को विद इन टू थ्री इयर्स टाइम जो है वो आठ परसेंट पे लेके जाएंगे देखिए आप इबिट्टा मार्जिन से चलते हैं हम सर पैट मार्जिन से चलते हैं क्योंकि हमारे लिए कैश प्रॉफिट इज इम्पोर्टेंट हमारे लिए अल्टीमेटली आर इज नॉट सो मच इम्पोर्टेंट बिकॉज आर तो एक ऐसा फैक्टर है कि अगर मैं अभी आपको दिखाने के लिए खाली क्रेडिटर बढ़ा दूं तो वो आरओसी और वर्किंग कैपिटल साइकिल तो इमीडिएटली रिड्यूस हो जाता है और आरओसी इमीडिएटली बढ़ जाता है बट सर कैश प्रॉफिट नहीं बढ़ता उससे तो हम लोग सर जेनुअनली अपने इन्वेस्टर के लिए भी और अपने मैनेजमेंट के लिए भी और अपने पांच हजार के लिए भी काम करते हैं सो देट वी कैन सक्सेसफुली रन द शो एंड बाई ट्वेंटी सिक्स जो हमारा टारगेट है टेन करोड़ सेफली पहुंचने का वो बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है सर विदाउट एनी एक्सीडेंट we should we should reach and we should reach that target perfect sir good to know that thank you so much thanks all the best thank you the next question is from the line of day one from simpl please go ahead uh yes sir thanks for the opportunity and uh, congratulations on great scale up in detail wiring uh, sir just if you can just throw some light on uh, Line for Hello. the part of the bin dropped. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Harish Kumar, individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, sir. Um, you mentioned that uh, capacity utilization in one of the segment is seventy-one percent, and in another sixty, and uh, the last one is hundred percent. So, can you please uh, categorize, like, uh, if we utilize 100% of capacity in all the segments, how much revenue we can uh, scale up? Close to 6400 crore revenue we can scale up. With 100% capacity utilization in a year? Around, around, uh, around 7000 7, crore we can reach. Yeah, because, like, uh, if I analyze uh, revenue already, we are around 6000 crore of revenue. So why only 65 or 7,000? I think it can go much higher. That's why I say sometimes it is not able to 100% utilize. Hello. Because, hello, as yes. I told uh, that we can reach to the 6,800 to 7,000 also, but it is very well uh, 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 safe, but it is conservative. So for the next year, we are targeting a 17% to 18% growth. So with the current capacity, 
every 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 year we do some uh, uh, de bottlenecking in the in the existing plants and uh, improve the efficiencies and increase the production by uh, replacing uh, older machines with the newer uh, faster machines so there also we build up little bit of capacity every year year after year in the existing factories and we have mentioned that we are going to do a capex and setting up a new greenfield project uh, from uh, from april onwards this uh, in the fy23 okay got and uh, my another question was like um, uh, because we are increasing retail sales every quarter on quarter so can we expect some time maybe in 2 3 years net profit margins of 10% because it is higher margin product i think we we are already uh, uh, able to generate 6.7 6 up to 6.5% uh, net profit after tax so uh, improving it by a percent or 1.5% should not be a problem but uh, we can't give any guidance for this you know will will uh, it will be on always on the best effort basis we can will definitely improve upon it so are we setting internally some ambitious target for net profit margin or for sales no like, no uh, our our uh, we have given a guidance for uh, uh, sales growth by uh, cagr of 17 to 18% so that and given the ebitda of say 11 to 11.5% that itself will grow the net profit margin uh, year after year uh, so Uh, how much in percentage it, it can grow in terms of uh, net of a pet uh, is difficult to say but any pet anywhere between 6.5 to 7% uh, net profit after tax should be, should be a good net profit on a bigger turnover on on a bigger sales okay thank you thank you very much ladies and gentlemen you may press star and one to ask a question the next question is from lan of devansh from my sign pl please go ahead uh, uh yeah sir thanks for the opportunity so the line for the participant again dropped ladies and gentlemen you may press star and 1 to ask a question The next question is from the line of Dhiranjali from ASK Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Um, hi, sir. Congratulations for good set result. Wanted to ask you, what is? Could you repeat the capacity utilization numbers, please? Capacity utilization in the wire and cable segment is seventy-one percent, and in the in the housewire division. It is 66 percent because we have added another uh, factory in 2019, and our stainless steel wire division is operating at 100 percent capacity. Okay, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. A reminder to all the participants. You may press star and one to ask a question. As there are no further questions, I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. So, um, uh, dear colleagues, thank you very much for uh, uh, I mean spending time with us for this question answer session. Uh, I. Um, again uh, express gratitude to all of you to having invested with us and uh, having faith in us and i assure you that the company will give a good growth and and a good uh, cash flows in in the quarter on quarter basis in the in the coming years uh, to reward its investors thank you very much thank you very much to everybody Thank you very much. On behalf of KEI Industries Limited and Monarch Network Capital Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. Bye.